Once upon a time, there was a little girl named Juliet. Juliet had such a huge love for animals that she could hardly contain it. It was so big, in fact, that she started sneaking all sorts of creatures into her bedroom, right under her parents' noses. The first animal she brought home was a fluffy white sheep. Juliet thought that if her parents ever discovered her woolly friend, she could simply say she brought him home to count sheep before bed each night. She figured they would find it amusing and let her keep him. Next, she welcomed a curious little cat, then a bustling family of hedgehogs, and finally she even managed to sneak in a small pond full of lively frogs. Juliet's room was brimming with life and laughter. It was her own little animal kingdom and she loved it. But when night fell and it was time for Juliet to go to bed, she realized there was a big problem. With all the animals in her bed, there was no room for her. Sheep and cat and hedgehogs and frogs all snuggled up, leaving no space for Juliet. She knew she couldn't possibly sleep on the floor, so she did something she had been dreading. She told her parents. Her parents were shocked to say the least. They couldn't believe their eyes as they saw the mini zoo in Juliet's room. Despite their surprise, they understood Juliet's predicament and let her sleep in their bed for the night. The next morning, Juliet woke up to find her very tired parents sipping coffee at the kitchen table and her room empty of all her animal friends. They had all been returned to their respective homes. Juliet was heartbroken and she trudged to school with a heavy heart. When she returned home, she slowly climbed up the stairs to her room, planning to cry into her pillow. But as she opened her bedroom door, instead of tears of sadness, her eyes filled with tears of joy. There on her bed was a plush sheep, a stuffed cat, a soft hedgehog and a squishy frog. They all fit perfectly on her bed and best of all they were there for her to cuddle each night and so dear listener Juliet's story reminds us of the importance of balancing our love and passion with practicality while her love for animals was wonderful having a sheep a cat hedgehogs and frogs, all in one room, was not practical. Her parents taught her a valuable lesson in a loving and understanding way. Good night, little dreamer. As you took yourself into bed, think of Juliet and her stuffed animals. Sweet dreams, little one. Once upon a time, there was a small boy named Parker James. Everyone who knew him called him PJ for short. PJ had a dream, a big dream, to become an astronaut and fly into the vast, starry expanse of space. His mind was full of twinkling stars 
swirling galaxies, and fascinating planets. With stars in his eyes and a cardboard box in his hands, PJ set out to build a spacesuit and a rocket. He worked diligently, sticking pieces of cardboard together, painting it to look just like the spaceships he'd seen in books. But alas, when he climbed inside his rocket, it wouldn't take off. It remained firmly on the ground, no matter how much he wished and hoped. He tried everything he could think of. He attached balloons to his rocket, tried pushing it down a hill, and even tried using a skateboard to launch it. But each attempt ended in failure. His dream of soaring into space seemed to be just out of reach. On his birthday, his parents surprised him with a big, bouncy trampoline. But PJ was disappointed. He'd been hoping for a real, working rocket, not a trampoline. He sulked and didn't even want to try bouncing on it. Then, one night, curiosity got the better of him. The sky sparkling with countless stars, PJ decided to sneak outside wearing his spacesuit. Climbing onto the trampoline, he began to bounce. As he bounced higher and higher, he started to feel a sense of weightlessness like an astronaut floating in space. He reached out his hands and it was almost as if he could touch the stars twinkling above. With each bounce, PJ was flying closer to his dreams. His laughter echoed in the quiet night as he realized that even though he wasn't actually in space, the feeling was close enough. The trampoline wasn't a disappointment after all. It was a stepping stone. A stepping stone to his dreams. And so, dear listener, PJ's adventure reminds us that sometimes things may not go as we plan. We may not always get exactly what we want, but it's essential to make the best of what we have. PJ found a way to reach for the stars, even though it wasn't the way he originally intended. Good night, little dreamer. As you close your eyes, remember that like PJ, you too can reach for the stars no matter what. You just need to find your own unique path. And who knows, it might be even better than you imagined. Sweet dreams, little one. Once upon a time, there was a very large seal named Sully. Now, Sully was unlike most other seals. He was so incredibly lazy that he spent most of his days lounging on the beach, barely moving a flipper. He was so still and quiet that everyone began to mistake him for a huge rock on the beach. Children would climb onto his back, thinking he was a perfect platform for their games. Seagulls would nestle down on him, mistaking him for a safe resting spot. Sully, the lazy seal, was always mistaken for a rock, but he hardly ever moved to correct anyone. 
One day, Sully grew tired of the constant disturbance. He decided to take a drastic step. He would paint himself green with seaweed, making him look less like a rock and more like a part of the green landscape. Maybe then, he thought, people would leave him alone. Unfortunately, his plan backfired. Instead of looking like part of the landscape, Sully now resembled a small hill. A family, thinking they'd found a perfect spot, tried to set up a picnic right on his back. Imagine their shock when the hill beneath their picnic blanket let out a surprised and annoyed bark. That day, Sully learned an important lesson. He realized that by being so lazy and inactive, he was only inviting trouble. From that day forward, Sully decided to be more active. He moved around, swam in the sea, and played with other seals. And to his surprise, he enjoyed it. He was no longer mistaken for a rock or a hill, and he liked it that way. And so, dear listener, Sully's story reminds us of the importance of staying active and involved. Being lazy might seem comfortable at first, but it can lead to unexpected problems it's always better to be active and lively and enjoy life as it comes. Good night, little dreamer. As you took yourself in for the night, remember Sully's tale. Tomorrow, find joy in being active, playing and engaging with the world around you. Remember, life is not meant to be spent lying like a rock, but exploring and experiencing new things. Good night, little adventurer. Once upon a time, in a cosy little neighborhood, there lived a plump and fluffy cat named Crumpet. Crumpet had a secret routine. Each day, he would strut down the street, visiting all of his neighbors. The neighbors loved Crumpet's visits and would give him treats. Crumpet adored the treats and enjoyed the attention. Crumpet's journey included many houses, and at each one, he would purr and nuzzle, charming the residents into giving him an assortment of treats. He munched on everything, from tuna to chicken, from cat biscuits to little bits of cheese. However, one rainy night, after a particularly successful day of visiting and feasting, Crumpet found that he could no longer fit through his own cat flap. His belly, filled to the brim with treats, was too big. He tried squeezing and squirming, but nothing worked. With a sigh, Crumpet had to spend the night outside with his tail getting wet in the drizzling rain. The next morning, a cold and soggy crumpet finally managed to squirm through the cat flap. He realized that he had been too greedy, gobbling up treats without thinking about the consequences. From that day on, crumpet decided to limit his treat consumption. He would still visit his neighbors, 
but now he would focus more on spending quality time with them instead of just eating their treats. And so, dear listener, Crumpet's story serves as a reminder about the dangers of greed. It's important to enjoy what we have, but not to take more than we need or to desire things excessively. True happiness comes from the joy of companionship and spending time with others, and not just what they can give us. Good night, little dreamer. May you find sweet dreams full of love, kindness and contentment. Once upon a time, there was a little boy named Teddy, who had a keen eye for adventure. One sunny day, as he was playing near his house, he spotted something unusual. In the tall, leafy tree at the edge of his backyard, Teddy saw a really large lizard. He squinted and tilted his head. Wait a minute. That wasn't just any lizard. It was a dinosaur. What are you doing in that tree, Mr. Dinosaur? Teddy called out. To his surprise, the dinosaur, startled by his voice, suddenly vanished into thin air. Teddy was taken aback, but he wasn't one to give up easily. He decided to keep talking to the empty tree in case the dinosaur decided to come back. Sure enough, after a while, the dinosaur appeared once again, much to Teddy's delight. He realised that the dinosaur had been there all along, but he could camouflage. This discovery excited Teddy. He then asked the dinosaur if he was playing hide-and-seek and and if he could join the game. In response, the dinosaur let out a happy hoot, which Teddy took as a yes. They played hide-and-seek all day, with the dinosaur blending into the surroundings and Teddy squealing with joy each time he found his new friend. They played until the sun set and the stars began to twinkle in the sky. That night, Teddy went to bed with a heart full of joy and a head full of dreams about camouflaging dinosaurs that might be hiding in all of his trees. From that day on, Teddy made it a point to talk to all the trees in his yard, hoping he might meet another new friend. And so, dear listener, Teddy's story teaches us to be open to the unexpected. Just because something doesn't seem possible, doesn't mean it isn't. Teddy found a friend in a dinosaur by being open and friendly, even when others might have run away or given up. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift off to sleep, remember Teddy and his dinosaur friend. Let your dreams be as big and as venturous as Teddy's were, and remember to greet the world with an open heart and mind. You never know what magical friendships might be waiting for you. Sweet dreams, little one.
Once upon a time, in a little village nestled between rolling hills and dense woods, there lived a little girl named Lizzie. Lizzie's room was on the top floor of their house, and she had a window that looked out onto a lush garden and the silvery stream that followed by it. Every night, as the clock chimed midnight, Lizzie would see a faint glimmer of light near her window. She'd pretend to be asleep, but would peek out from beneath her blankets, trying to catch a glimpse of what was causing it. One moonlit night, her patience paid off. A delicate fairy with glistening wings and a flowing gown appeared, fluttering near her windowsill. Lizzie noticed that the fairy seemed to be searching for something. She would hover over Lizzie's desk, peek into her jewellery box, and even nudge her teddy bears. Curious and wanting to help, Lizzie decided to leave out some sweets for the fairy, thinking that perhaps she was hungry. The next night, Lizzie laid out a plate of colourful candies on her windowsill. When the fairy appeared, she went straight to the plate. But instead of delight, the fairy looked quite cross. The sweets were not what she was looking for. The following morning, Lizzie found the untouched sweets. While pondering over what to do next, she decided to eat them. As Lizzie chewed on a particularly hard candy, she felt something dislodge from her mouth. <gasps> to her surprise, it was her tooth. It had been wiggling for days, and now it had finally fallen out. Excitedly, Lizzie went downstairs to show her mum her tooth, and told her mum about the fairy and the events of the previous nights. Her mum listened attentively, with a knowing smile on her face. Why don't you put the tooth under your pillow tonight, Lizzie? Lizzie's mum suggested, with a wink. Lizzie, trusting her mum's wisdom, did just that. As midnight approached, she once again pretended to be asleep. The tooth safely tucked under her pillow. Sure enough, at the stroke of midnight, the fairy reappeared. This time, she went straight to Lizzie's pillow and gently took the tooth, leaving behind something for Lizzie to find. The next morning, Lizzie woke up to find a new toothbrush and coins under her pillow. The realisation hit her. The fairy wasn't just any fairy. She was the Tooth Fairy. She had been searching for Lizzie's wobbly tooth all along. No wonder she didn't like her sweets. And so, dear listener, Lizzie's tale is a magical reminder of the wonders that exist around us. Even if we don't always understand them at first, it's a story of curiosity, of the magic of growing up, and the little surprises life has in store for us. Good night, little dreamer. As you close your eyes, and drift off into the world of dreams, think of Lizzie and her midnight fairy. May your dreams be filled with magic, wonder, and the joy of discovering the unexpected. Sleep tight and dream happy thoughts until the morning light.
Once upon a time, in the vast expanse of the shimmering blue ocean, there was a sprightly dolphin named Danny. Danny was no ordinary dolphin. He had a flair for flipping out of the water, soaring through the air and landing back with barely a splash. It was his most favourite thing to do, and he believed it could be for others too, even if they weren't dolphins. One day, while playfully flipping out of the water, an idea popped into Danny's head. Why not teach the fish to flip too, he thought. The very next morning, Danny began his mission. He approached a school of colourful fish and demonstrated his beautiful flip. Would you like to learn? he asked. The fish, initially puzzled, soon became intrigued. The idea of jumping out of the water and feeling the sun directly on their scales was both frightening and exciting. They decided to give it a shot. However, the other dolphins, having observed Danny's endeavours, laughed and called him silly. Fish aren't meant to flip, Danny. Why waste your time? They would mock. But Danny was not to be deterred. He knew every creature had potential. They just needed a little push sometimes. Day after day, Danny patiently taught the fish, guiding them on how to gather speed and momentum, and then launch themselves out of the water. Weeks went by, and then one sunny day, a miraculous sight greeted the ocean inhabitants. A school of fish, led by Danny, flipped out of the water in a spectacular display of sparkling scales and splashing water, creating a rainbow against the sun. The dolphins watched in amazement, their mocking voices silenced. The ocean echoed with cheers from all creatures, big and small. The once mocking dolphins now looked at Danny with respect and admiration. They realised that size truly didn't matter when it came to achieving what seemed impossible. And so, dear listener, the ocean's depths held a tale of determination and belief. It taught all its inhabitants that with the right guidance and a little faith, anyone can soar beyond their boundaries, no matter how big or small they are. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift into sleep, let Danny's story remind you to never underestimate yourself or others. Remember that with a bit of patience and belief, the sky, or in Danny's case, the surface of the ocean, is the limit. Sleep tight, little one, and dream big. Once upon a time, in a dense, colourful forest, there lived a bear named Bruno. Bruno was curious and always loved exploring the woods. 
One sunny afternoon, while chasing a butterfly, Bruno clumsily climbed a tree. But when it was time to come down, he realised he was stuck. Fear gripped Bruno as he looked down and imagined the long fall awaiting him. As Bruno grunted and groaned, trying to figure a way out, a friendly squirrel named Sam scurried by. Noticing Bruno's predicament, Sam said, Don't worry Bruno, it's not that high, just jump. You'll be fine. Bruno wasn't convinced. It looks very high from up here, he replied, clinging tighter to the tree branch. Throughout the day, various animals passed by. The chirpy birds, a wise old owl, and even a nimble deer all offered the same advice. Jump, Bruno! We promise it's not as high as you think, they assured him. Despite their reassurances, Bruno's fear held him back. He couldn't bring himself to take the leap, not believing in the words of his friends. Night began to fall, and the stars twinkled above. Exhausted from his long day, clinging to the tree and overwhelmed by his fear, Bruno eventually dozed off. While he slept, a group of his animal friends gathered below. Understanding Bruno's fear, they wanted to make his landing as soft as possible. Together, they collected a mountain of leaves, arranging them right under the tree. As the first rays of the morning sun peeked through the trees, drowsy Bruno shifted in his sleep, and with a soft thud, he landed safely onto the cushiony pile of leaves. Waking up, he realised what had happened and saw the effort his friends had put into ensuring his safety. With joy in his heart and a newfound appreciation for his friends, Bruno understood that sometimes you need to trust the ones who love you. And so, dear listener, Bruno's tale teaches us the importance of faith and trust. Often, those who care about us know what's best, and even when we're scared, it's crucial to listen and to trust their wisdom. Good night, little dreamer. As you close your eyes and drift into a world of dreams, remember the comforting embrace of the leaves and the love of your friends. Sweet dreams, little one. Once upon a time, in a grand palace filled with golden chandeliers and marble floors, there was a hamster named Henry. Henry wasn't just any hamster. He belonged to the most graceful queen in the land. He lived a comfortable life with a luxurious cage decked in silk cushions and an ever-spinning golden wheel. One day, as Henry was nibbling on his favourite treat, he noticed something unusual. The mice, who lived in the palace walls, 
who usually scampered about without giving him much attention, suddenly stopped in their tracks. One by one, they bowed low, their little whiskers twitching in reverence. Henry, puzzled by this odd behaviour, twitched his nose and asked, Why are you bowing to me? One brave mouse named Milo stepped forward and said, Haven't you heard, Henry? You're not just any hamster. You're the king of hamsters. We mice have known for ages, but we thought you knew too. Henry blinked in surprise. King of hamsters? Him? Word quickly spread and soon other creatures in the palace, birds, cats, and even the royal dog bowed whenever they saw Henry. But Henry was worried. Hmm. He didn't want to be treated differently, especially by his close friends in the palace. He remembered the fun times with the songbirds, playful chases with the kittens, and shared meals with the friendly mice. He didn't want any of that to change. So Henry decided to hold a grand feast, but not as a king, as a friend. He invited all the creatures of the palace, from the tiniest ant to the majestic peacock. Today we celebrate, not a king, but a bond. A bond of friendship. The banquet was filled with laughter and joy. Henry made sure to spend time with each of his friends, reassuring them that a title wouldn't change who he was. He danced with the birds, played hide and seek with the kittens, and even shared his favourite treats with the mice. And so, dear listener, in the grandeur of the palace, Henry the Hamster taught everyone a valuable lesson. No matter how important or revered one might become, it's the bonds of friendship and staying true to oneself that truly matters. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift into dreams, Remember the tale of Henry, the hamster who was a king, but chose friendship over royalty. May you always value the friendships you have, and know that being true to yourself is the most regal trait of all. Once upon a time, in a serene and peaceful pond, there lived a duck named Gilly. Gilly was different from the other ducks, not in how he looked or quacked, but in his fear of bobbing for apples. Every fall, when the trees around the pond shed their ripe apples, the ducks would joyously plunge their heads into the water, retrieving the sunken fruits, but not Gilly. The other ducks, noticing Gilly's reluctance, took to teasing him. Look at silly Gilly, they'd quack, showing off their apple-bobbing skills, making him feel more left out. Gilly felt heartbroken and embarrassed. He began to avoid the other ducks, choosing to spend his time at the shallow end of the pond, far from their taunts and jeers. One misty morning, while Gilly was by himself, 
a new duck landed on the pond. His name was Mort. Mort was friendly. And after a brief introduction, he and Gilly quickly became fast friends. They shared stories, swam side by side, and enjoyed the serenity of the pond together. When the other ducks saw that Gilly had made a new friend, they were quick to swim over to Mort. Did you know Gilly is silly? They quacked, hoping to make Mort laugh at Gilly's expense. He won't even bob for apples. Mort, however, wasn't one to judge or tease. Instead, looking squarely at the mocking ducks, he replied, Gilly is one of the kindest ducks I've ever met. It doesn't matter if he can't bob for apples. What truly matters is the kindness in his heart and not making fun of others. We should all learn to be more understanding and accepting. The other ducks, taken aback by Mort's wise words, felt a pang of guilt. They realised that they'd been unfair to Gilly. From that day on, Gilly was no longer teased. The ducks learned a valuable lesson about acceptance and understanding. All thanks to Mort's wisdom and Gilly's enduring kindness. And so, dear listener, the tale of Gilly and Mort teaches us that it's not our abilities or inabilities that define us, but the content of our character. It's important to be kind, understanding, and never judge others for being different. Good night, little dreamer. As you drift off to sleep, remember the lesson from Gilly's Pond. Embrace the differences in those around you and always choose kindness over ridicule. Sweet dreams, little one, of gentle ponds and understanding friends await you. Once upon a time, in a quaint little farm, nestled amongst rolling hills, there was a lively baby goat named Gilbert. Gilbert had discovered something amazing about himself. He could jump, and not just ordinary jumps, but extraordinarily high ones. Every chance he got, he would leap into the air, touching the tips of the tallest grass and sometimes even the lower branches of trees. His parents, Mr. and Mrs. Goat, instantly reminded him, Gilbert, it's good to be proud of what you can do, but stop showing off or you'll regret it. His friends, the chicks, the piglets, and even the young bunnies, echoed the same. Stop showing off, Gilbert, or you'll regret it! But Gilbert, with his youthful zest, just couldn't resist the temptation to jump every time someone watched. One sunny afternoon, feeling particularly energetic, Gilbert decided to show off his newest jump to his friends. With a running start, he leaped higher than he'd ever had before. It was such a grand jump that he found himself 
on top of the barn roof. <gasps> At first, Gilly felt a surge of pride. Look how high I've jumped, he thought. But as the evening sun began to cast long shadows, and the cool breeze of the night started to blow, Gilbert realised he was stuck. There was no easy way down. His little hooves tapped nervously on the barn roof as he called out for help. His parents and friends gathered around the barn, worriedly looking up at him. The cows, with their tall stature, tried to find a way to help him down, but it was too dark and risky. You'll have to wait until morning, Gilbert, mooed Mrs. Cow, her voice filled with concern. That night, Gilbert had to sleep on the barn roof, wrapped in a blanket of stars, missing the warmth of his own bed. The next morning, with the first light, the cows formed a cushion barrier with their soft bodies. Gilbert mustered his courage and leaped down, landing safely onto their comforting embrace. As his hooves touched the ground, he was surrounded by his relieved friends and parents. We told you to stop showing off, Gilbert. We said you'd regret it. Though they were glad he was safe, it was evident that Gilbert had learned his lesson. From that day on, Gilbert still jumped, but without the need to constantly show off. And so, dear listener, the farm tale of Gilbert, the high-jumping baby goat, reminds us of the importance of humility and listening to the wisdom of those who care about us. Good night, little dreamer. As you took yourself in, remember Gilbert's adventure on the barn roof and know that sometimes, even when we think we're soaring, it's essential to keep our feet on the ground. Good night, little one. Dream of gentle fields, loving friends, and lessons learned under a twinkling star-filled sky. Once upon a time, in the heart of a vast green valley, surrounded by rolling hills, there lived a wolf named Wilbur. Wilbur was a lone wolf, but never felt lonely. The hills, the streams, and the whispering winds kept him company. One cool morning, as he was returning to his cave after a night's adventure, he heard something unusual. A distant call of another wolf. Eagerly, Wilbur pricked up his ears. Could it be another wolf in these hills, he wondered. The voice sounded so familiar, yet it wasn't from any direction he recognised. Days turned into weeks, as Wilbur scoured the valley and hills, climbing steep terrains and crossing bubbling brooks, looking for the mysterious wolf he had heard. Wilbur would occasionally stop and howl, 
waiting for the other wolf to answer. And sure enough, every time, the call would come back, but just a tad bit softer, as if teasing him from a distance. One evening, feeling a bit tired and thirsty, Wilbur decided to head back to his welcoming cave. As he entered, on a whim, he let out a long, melancholic howl. To his surprise, the howl echoed back. The walls of his cave played back his voice, making him realise that there wasn't another wolf at all. What he'd been chasing all this time was just an echo. At first, Wilbur felt a pang of disappointment, but then he thought of all the beautiful places he'd explored and the fun he'd had searching for the imaginary wolf. He realised that he enjoyed the journey and the company he kept along the way. His own. As he settled into his cave that night, under the canopy of shimmering stars, Wilbur learned a valuable lesson. He didn't need to find another wolf to feel content. The journey, the adventures, and his own company were more than enough. And so, dear listener, Wilbur's tale reminds us that sometimes the chase, the journey, and the time spent with oneself can be just as fulfilling, if not more, than the destination or discovery. Good night, little dreamer. As you snuggle under your blanket, remember Wilbur's echo and his journey. Let it teach you the joy of self-discovery and the magic of solitude. May your dreams be filled with adventurous chases and heartwarming endings. <laughs>